Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and join our Facebook community for epic weekly giveaways. What's up guys? The all new Phantom Gear T3 Wraith Plate Carrier comes in a variety of colors and represents a really well thought out, well designed, budget friendly plate carrier. And the team and I thought it would be a great idea to come up with four different loadouts using four different colored PCs to give you guys a better idea of how you might set up your gear. I'm George and I'm gonna be using the Coyote Brown one and I'm gonna build it for an AK. I'm Tanya, this is a DNC and I'm building it for a PP19. Nice. Well, I just finished an SR25 build that you guys might think is cool, so I'm doing a heavy build for an SR25. I'm Mason, and I've got the Ranger Green PC here, and I'm going to build it for an M4, kind of high speed. Well, now that we know what we're doing, let's get to building. Come on, guys. Go. What's up? This is my Phantom Gear T3 Wraith gear setup. This is in Desert Knight camo. I chose the Cloudtac for a magazine panel for my SMG PP19 mags. They also have it in a five if you want to run something a little bit more. I also got the Mini Dangler by Ferro Concepts. Um, I wanted something more minimalistic, so I left everything else just as is. Inside, I used the PTS Sappy foam plates. They're very comfortable and they're very lightweight. Um, essentially for indoor CQB style. I left the common button as is. You could add more magazines, so if you really wanted to run more without additional gear, it's definitely perfect for even SMG or M4 mags. And everything else about it internally is also very cushioned, so I didn't need to add a lot. The back is plain for patches. <laughs> That's pretty much it. It's very perfect for indoor play or outdoor, but mostly for me, I prefer indoors. So that's why I went for the cloud tack and everything very minimalistic. What's up guys, I'm George. So I got the Coyote Brown one that we had to build for an AK. I kind of wanted to do something a little different than I normally would run myself, as well as kind of going off the beat path from the rest of the team. So I did some very unique things and some not so very unique things. So the first thing I did is on the front panel here, I attached the Phantom Gear um, pouches. They can hold two AK mags. I only have one in here for right now. And then I attached the 511 um, radio pouch, which I've never seen before. Um, actually pretty nice. So it's got like this cool locking mechanism so you know, we can get access to the radio. Um, and it's just very simple. I actually kind of uh, like that pouch. I've never seen it before. Um, on the bottom is a mini dangler or whatever you want to call it from Ferro Concepts. Really like that. Moving on, this is the bees skeleton cummerbund. Um, so it has these, it's kind of similar to the tubes, but it's very cool, quick detach um, for the cummerbund. On my left side, I just attached a Blue Force gear um, utility general purpose pouch. I kind of wanted to use a different pouch, but we didn't have it available in stock in Coyote Brown, which was the LBX one. But um, the size of this one's actually a little bit smaller, so I kind of like it. On the right side, I wanted to have just this slim extra magazine pouch or multi-purpose you know, multi radio pouch. This is the TMC. It's kind of like the a certain company that begins with a C, you know, um, decided to put that pouch on here. I was gonna maybe even put one on the back, but I haven't done that yet. I don't know if I will, but overall, that's the front of the rig. Back of the rig, I wanted to showcase how the back can be all Velcro. So what I did was I just took off the back panel and I put on the LBX banger back panel. And then I, I attached the cummerbund with something I made myself to be able to rig the cummerbund up with shock cord. You could also just directly run shock cord between the two loops of this cummerbund to make it work, but it might sag a little bit for you and tweak you know, to the left or to the right. So just be aware. And then other than that, you know, just rigged up some buckles and yeah, we're all set. This rig is mostly designed around a milsim game. I mean, you can carry up to five mags pretty easily. Radio and carry um, extra medical supplies or per, uh, general purpose stuff in your two pouches there. In your back panel, you can carry hydration as well as an extra pocket here to put extra grenades, BBs, whatever you fancy. And then these um, little pouches are kind of cool because they can hold, um, tag in flashbangs or they can hold the small EG smokes. Um, very handy back panel. This is a very multi-purpose rig. You could use it with M4s, AKs, 
overall, very impressed by this rig. Um, you know, having the Ammon panel there is kind of nice. Put the radio on top, good shoulder pads. Overall, good rig. So I went pretty minimalist on this build. My whole kind of uh, philosophy behind it was I wanted to build something that I would use out at like a weekend game. Uh, so I don't need to carry around like hydration, a whole bunch of tools, a radio, etc. Basically just mags and that's it. Mags and patches. That's all you really need, right? As far as pouches go, I used this, uh, this Phantom Gear triple shingle magazine pouch. And as you can see, I've stretched the cummerbund to go over it so what that does is it snugs it right up against your body keeps it nice and slick on the front an additional benefit to running the cummerbund like this is it means that you don't have to pull the flap up every time you want to take it on and off all you got to do is just take it off you can swim into it and just slap it back on and on, on top of keeping it really close to your body it's also just really easy to get in and out of so i like to run my plate carriers in this fashion you could put even more patches right up here if you wanted to so you've got three magazines in the front but the cool thing about these is they have an elastic a cummerbund that has mag pouches built in. So you could put an additional six magazines for those longer games, but typically for a lot of pickup games, you only need three plus one of the gun, maybe an extra. So again, you've got plenty of mag space for that. The one pouch I did put on there is a Feral Concepts Dangler. Uh, I like these just because you can throw like phone, keys, wallet, uh, or like snacks right here, and it kind of protects your gut a little bit. Extra uh, added bonus. Now these plate carriers do come with a built-in admin pouch up top. It's Velcro and can be a little bit difficult to get to by itself. So what I did is I added an axle zipper add-in. So what, it, what that does is it just goes in there and it gives you really easy access to that admin pouch and it has some uh, elastic inside. And again, you can put like chewy bars in there. You could put your keys, wallet, cell phone. And again, it's really slick. It's kind of hidden, but it makes access to that pouch really easy. I did not add any plates to this one. Instead, I just used the included foam inserts. They're flexible and they're thin. Again, going with the whole theme of this build is to be thin, lightweight, low profile, and really, really simple. Again, the only, uh, the only addition that I really made was I went heavy on the patches because it's airsoft. As for the back, I left it completely slick. I took off that Molly uh, panel right here and it's just got the uh, Velcro real estate for more patches if you, if you want, or you can leave it completely bare like I did here. I just put some patches up top. But what that does is that uh, keeps it nice, slim and trim, and it's just less to deal with. You could, of course, add a pouch to that uh, extra molly flap if you wanted to, but me, I just kept it slick just because it's just for weekend games. And I don't need to carry around a whole bunch of extra stuff if I'm just going back to the spawn. And this is the final build for my Phantom Gear Wraith plate carrier. Let's do this. So what I came up with combining a base of my Wraith Black T3 plate carrier, this was designed for a very specific build and it's my SR25 308 SBR, which is totally the wrong way to do an SR25. And I thought it was hilarious, but I wanted to do a really highly mobile, very compact kit to run, you know, kind of like for indoor plays where you really wouldn't see a 308 or an SR25. I'm running three magazine pouches up front to do that, I've utilized the STAC Kiwi Shorties 4762 magazines, and then give myself a little bit more storage volume uh, in addition to the openable admin pouch at the top, it, just so I can carry more stuff. I've got a Ferro Concepts mini dangler here at the bottom. Now you guys saw me in the hyperlapse um, just kind of slap these on the front here. Uh, the nice thing about most of these pouch designs is they're all Velcro, so they go on very easily. The included um, ITW or QASM compatible one inch buckles mean that you can slap on a variety of, um, of front panels. And I could have very easily uh, mounted these Kiwis to the included front panel. I just already had them mounted to a different panel. It's the only reason why I swapped them out. Up top, running through the shoulder straps, I've got my hydration line running from the back of the vest to the front. I really like that both sides uh, have these loops. That way, if you're left-handed or you wanna have your hose oriented that way, or if you've got comms, you can run a cable through there. And then moving to the back, I've got a Condor Tidepool LCS um, hydration carrier. I wanted the ability to keep it as slick as possible while still having water. And the tide pool is a great way to do that. It carries, I think, a liter, a liter and a half. And I like that because it's so compact, if I wanted to use this for longer games where I need to carry more magazines or more supplies, I can throw a backpack on over this vest because it's so compact and because I've only got elastic on the sides, I don't have to worry about 
kind of orienting a backpack around a bunch of gear. And it still has PALS um, webbing through the, the laser cut panels on the back to add even more if I wanted to, and patch space if I wanted to throw an evic.com patch or something like that. Speaking of patches, on the front again, I slapped on the biggest three by five blacked out flag patch I could find. And you'll notice that I also slapped an M4 magazine uh, speed loader up here. This is a KWA speed loader. There is not an easy way to speed load SR25 magazines. I wish the Odin fit. It doesn't. So just a, an M4 style um, speed loader is a great way to you know, load those magazines. And because it fits in one of the three bays on either side of your cummerbund, it's a great place to put them. The cool thing about this cummerbund is it's got an intermediate bay between your M4 mag pouch bays. If you can see the stitching there, it's a great place to put Sharpies or glow sticks or anything else that's kind of, you know, pencil sized and pencil shaped. Uh, and when they're not in use, they fold flat. I'm sure everybody else has already talked about the venting here on the inside, which for me is fantastic because for an $80 vest, the venting included on the vest is really nice. I will say, however, uh, that while it is a nice touch to include you know, some padding in the vest to make it look a little bit more realistic um, when it comes out of the package or you know, when you purchase it, for me, I wanted a little bit more realism. So as you saw, I slapped in those evic.com dummy sappy plates. They are mediums and this vest fits the mediums perfectly. You shouldn't need to use these as like a plate backer. I mean, you could, you were making your own out of you know cardboard and duct tape or if you're using training plates that are a little bit thinner but the venting inside the vest does plenty to cushion you against the uh, the hard edges of the dummy plate or even real plates so still got a lot of comfort there and with all the other adjustments i think uh i think overall i'm really happy with how this came out am i a little disappointed that i can only only run three mags i mean it's an sr25 what are you gonna do now you guys have seen the process of how each one of us individually put our plate carriers together, but we haven't seen each other's plate carriers. So without further ado, let's put them up on three. One, two, three. Oh, cool. Nice. That's really interesting. So we all took completely different approaches. And I'm not just talking about the different weapon systems that we were planning on using them for. I see something unique on each one of ours that is different from the others. George, what do you think? I mean, my goal when I built mine was I wanted to really try to change the cover button, see if we can do with these rings. Sure. You can't. You have to do a little bit of customization, but you can do it. I like how your rig came out, Tanya, with the, I want to call it the hodgepodge of patterns. Yeah. You got DNC in there, you got black, you got multi game black. What can go wrong with that? It just looks cool. And this is the first time I've ever seen a vest that comes in night camo. So that's really right. cool. Yes, yeah. I'm so excited about this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think we all might be buying one. Of those. I feel like we all collectively said, like, we need night camo vests for no reason other than it's the coolest thing ever. Your rig, I think, is perfectly set up for a Milsim game. You've got plenty That's, of storage yep. for magazines. You've got communication on there. That's something that I don't think any of the rest of us did was figuring out how to orient a comm setup on here. Although, given that, you know, so I ran a hydro carrier, but running the hose is the same thing as running a, a cable. You could have run it through your shoulder strap or having yeah. access to it on the front of your yeah. vest. Yeah. Or even on the side cover button that was included. You got tons of ways to you do that. Put a radio in here, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah perfect. Matt, those mags are huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is huge. Uh, there is a clear disadvantage to going with a, a heavier platform. You can carry less on the front of you. I think something that's really cool about PCCs and Airsoft is, uh, by and large, they carry just about as many rounds as the yeah. larger magazine. So the larger capacity or larger size doesn't necessarily net doesn't you net more, you anything, but more it's cool. rounds. It's cool. Back it makes me yep. feel super cool. Uh, and mine was kind of like a hybrid between outdoor and indoor. I wanted to be able to kind of do it all in a, like a really stripped down way. One of the things that I tried to do with mine was keep the, the hydro carrier like super flat so I could throw a backpack on if I was doing like mill sims or like yeah, longer engagements. Super slim. Um, and thankfully, despite having a lot of padding, these shoulder straps don't really get in the way. I they don't. Like They're actually really nice shoulder straps that come like default by the carrier. And I, I can't think of very many plate carriers that are this well made. Yeah. And have all these features. Have, yeah. Has an elastic cummerbund with mag holders, has good shoulder strap yeah. system. Like overall, just like solid budget plate carrier. I don't think any of us went budget at all on the plate carrier, <laughs> except maybe uh, Macy's is kind of budget. I but went with the patches are shingle, gonna, and then I, man, you guys gotta up your patch game. Yeah, I, I gotta I tell you, I got one. patches all I have two thing. patches. Or, man, I didn't put any yeah, patch, but you, I put one flag patch. Yeah, but you don't have the, you don't have that the is a pretty cool patch right there. there. But I got room for it, that's what I'm you saying. Don't have I, got, I got all the room in the world. So. Now, something interesting that I noticed that you did on yours is you, so you used a shingle, but then you put the cummerbund Velcro on top of it. Yeah, that really helps snug it against your body. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I didn't install any aftermarket plates. I just used the foam that comes in there just because it's supportive enough, and, but it's still thinner than aftermarket plates, uh, fake or real. Yeah. So it just snugs against your body and conforms to it really well. And they do come with 
pads. Yeah. Like they do come with a like a, an insertable pad. That's, yeah. It's pretty minimal. There you uh, go. Yeah. So you don't have to rush out and buy plates if you don't want to. The other thing I liked about the, the shingle that you chose too is I know that when we sell these, they come with bungee retention mm -hmm. um, on top for like added security. But because they've got the inserts, you really don't need it. And I, I like that you can. Okay, I like how you're trying it. really hard. Yeah. <laughs> no, they got like the, the inserts in there, so it really keeps them nice and snug. It's a very Tolarian community college uh, shape test. <laughs> yeah. I dig it. Did we all go with a Pharaoh Dangler? We. Please? Yes. Uh, yes, we all did. Wait, what we, the heck? What? We all did. Okay, this is what's nuts. So I picked this because I was like, oh, dude, no one's going to go with the smaller dangler. <laughs> I'm the only yes. one of us went with the smaller dangler. <laughs> I'm the only one with the full size. Yeah. For more patches. <laughs> yes, more patches. I will I say, know. on all of these, having the front zipper is a lot more convenient than having to reach under your oh, magazines yeah. to, to unzip the top pouch. Very true. Um, and I also like the newer versions of a lot of these all have the ability to take a tourniquet or other um, hanging accessory uh, in front instead of having to come up with, you know, one of those ones that you add onto the side. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's convenient that all of these have uh, hook and loop and that you can, you know, put on a front shingle of, of a variety of styles. But the more stuff you add, the more Velcro you add, you know, in between those, it just becomes more and more bulky. Overall, very fun project to build. I yeah. hope that you guys enjoyed this as much as we did. So then we have one final question for you, and that is, you the user, which one of these do you like the best? Oh yeah, we should vote. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> vote. So just comment below. You could say Matt's rig, Tanya's rig, Mason's, Mason's rig, George's rig. Like, we if you want to actually know which of these five, four you like the best. Yeah. yeah. If you guys want to see us, and, do yeah. If you want to see more of these videos, yeah. comment that you love these videos below. We read the comments. Yeah. Please let us know. Gear build offs, rifle build offs, you name it, we'll do it to a degree. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> want even more airsoft content? Hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon. Follow us on Instagram and join our Facebook for epic weekly giveaways.